The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on the very last trading day of August. We're looking at on the 30th of August, we're looking at the uh, Dow of 53 at 41,389. So, I, I, it's Technical Friday today where I do a lot more based on the Chapman Wave methodology in terms of the analysis. Let me just show you this. Oops. I'll get it. There it is. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the lowest low bar. If it starts to rally, we count each successively higher peak. When it gets to leg B or to a peak B, that's usually when we've upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode. And the implication is that it should go to at least a C and a D. That's the obligation in the Chapman Wave of, of a buy mode. And D, other things can happen. So we won't talk about that right this very moment. We'll get to it. But in the meantime, where are we in the Dow? We're in leg C. So all day, this 41,577 high is considered leg C, even though you right now we're looking at it and it looks like a peak. Maybe it is. But it's a daily chart. You always have to wait for the close. Sometimes you have to wait for the close on the very start of the next bar because it can extend that move. So if we go to 41,577.07 and then stall, that's going to be an extension of leg C. If it goes one penny higher, that's an extension of leg C. But if it fails at under 41,577 point, uh, it wasn't 07, it was 97. So if it goes to 98, that extends leg C. If it stalls at 0.96 or lower, that gives you your peak C. And what did we have yesterday? We had a long-legged doji candle. In other words, we opened and closed just at about the same price, but we had big intraday swings up and down. What did the S&P do yesterday? The S&P closed unchanged. Now, I used to hand chart. i got it right there, but I can't pick it up. Um, hand chart the Dow, the Nike, Nikkei, uh, the Japanese uh, market, and the FTSE. I don't do any of that now, of course. But I used to hand chart it um, for a long time. Even got the, the chart when, in 1990, I think it was, when the uh, Nike made its its uh, all-time high. And I had that, I think it was a peak F in my daily chart. Um, anyway, so as I'm looking at this right now, the S&P made a 0% change. And I used to take a little yellow uh, marker and always mark a 0% change. I did it all the way through from the 1920 uh, Dow charts that I used to get, uh, the backdated charts, and I hand notated them all because I had just the size uh, uh, engineering graph paper. By the time I finished, uh, I had this huge, you know, I had to tape these pieces of paper together. Well, in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is the 0% change. We had a 0% change in 1987. I had a peak F in my notated hand chart. My first client was Fidelity, uh, Fidelity uh, the technical department of Fidelity. That summer they gave, gave me a trial. And then in beginning of August, they said, okay, you're on. We like your work, et cetera. I, had a, I actually had a hotline. So they'd have to call that. I, I used to also go meet with them every couple of weeks. Um, well, Fascinatingly enough, I used to hand chart these zero percent changes, and the Dow made a high. In I can't remember the date, maybe the 23rd of August or something of 1987, and it started to move down and then had a bounce. I actually have some of the charts here, but they're all well, they are in the, uh, digital, um, and it bounced. And it stalled at, I'm just guessing now, 2760 or something like that. I can't remember, but it, for two days, it had exactly a, 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 an unchanged. In fact, I think it was to the penny. 
And I said to on my hotline, I said the next day, and, the, and this was a big deal. I said, if tomorrow the Dow uh, is at any point 60 points or lower, or watch out, there could be a serious decline. Well, it was, and that was Dow a serious decline. Took six weeks to that October 19th um, smash to the downside and reversal with all these round numbers. So I've always looked at 0% changes, round numbers, and things like that. And what I said was, for the Dow, the Dow needs to be from the from the unchanged level of yesterday based on the candles, not the actual price. I'm talking about just the this chart right here. Let me go back to it right here. If the Dow was up 120 or down 120 at any point, um, that would be a big deal because it would suggest that they're going to try, in the Dow's case, try for the upper level, that 41 Five seven seven, and make the uh, uh, the Doji candle close yesterday of uh, forty one thousand three thirty five, kind of a some kind of intraday support. If it was down, it would be the resistance, and you'd have to watch the low of yesterday. So it's kind of an important moment, just a very short term. In the S and P, I said uh, I can't remember the exact figure offhand because. It's an unusual thing. Let me just tell you right now what it was. I said, um, Trader's Corner right there. I said if the, oh, it was, no, it was, yeah, in this chart here, every day I show subscribers this chart. It's the daily chart, two, two pictures of the daily chart with different technical indicators, and the 120-minute chart, which has gone to a peak C and should technically go to a leg D, but it's got automated Chapman Wave 41,597.34 automated resistance right there, and we'll see what happens. So um, I, I discussed, the, I say Dow closed up 243 at 41,335, after being up over 500 points, blah, blah, blah. And then I talk about the round numbers. And then I said, if the Dow is up 120 points, uh, up or down, that is important. The S&P, if it was up or down 40 points, that was would be very important. So here we are, the Dow is up 38. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we'll see if it gets up 40 points. And the Dow is up 97. It did get. It didn't quite get to 120 points. And then I talk about this, and I just say that um, uh, there is uh, earnings. The inflation report at 8:30 a.m. will be important, but we're looking to see what happens after 1:30, and that's going to be important. Okay. So technical Friday, we've done that. What I'm looking at is, yes, I could call this a peak C1, C2, underneath the 56.69.67 high of the S&P. And the V-shaped pattern says, watch out when you get this. Is what I, you remember, I, for those who used to do my all-day webinars, so sometimes I did a three-day webinar, um, I used to discuss the Groucho Marx eyebrows where the price goes up sharply and then comes down and makes like a V-shape, like there's the schnoz, there's the eyebrows, you know, he's got those thick, he had those thick eyebrows, which I never particularly liked, uh, liked uh, the, Groucho, the, the the Marx Brothers too much. I didn't think they were that funny. Anyway, down and straight up, and then if it fails, you've got to be really careful with that V-shape pattern. All right, so I'll be back in a moment. We'll finish with the Groucho Marx indicator. We'll finish with the um, long-legged doji, and we'll finish with the 0% change. I'll be back in a moment. We'll look at, we'll look at the futures as we go out. Big deal. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. In the trap wave methodology, if there's a PHC and there's a pullback and then the price goes back and fails just underneath it, I can always look at that as a PHC1 and a PHC2 in preparation of a pullback because it just failed to get to a D if there is a hiccup in one of the technical indicators. In this case, there really wasn't a hiccup. There was at peak C, and now the uh, on-balance volume is pulling back. The stochastic still at 87%, very strong, although it's declining a little bit. The MACD is still very strong. The relative strength index is pretty good. Nine is way over the 14. So for the S&P, as far as I'm concerned, this is still very positive. Um, and I'm expecting 51, 51.62 is taken out with an attempt next week of trying to get to the 56, 69.67 area. That was the all time high back on the 16th of July. If perchance, and I have to consider this, uh, we have no position in the S&P along the uh, kind of uh, um, aggressively long, I'd say. On the short term uh, for the for the Dow as well as intermediate term long, um, and we also along the IWM, but the, not nothing in the S and P. And yet, look at this; it's holding really well. If it goes below, if it closes below fifty six, no fifty five sixty point ninety five, that was the low of the twenty eighth uh, three days ago. That'll say, uh oh, maybe that's a peak C1, C2, and now you're getting a bit of a pullback. All the tacticals are strong, and I'm looking at that V-shaped pattern in the uh, weekly. Now, I just wanted to show you this SPLV. I've been showing it for a little while now. This is the low volatility S&P fund. Uh, it's trading in leg C right now. Well, it's an F slash C. I'm calling it a C for the moment. Um, I don't see why I should call it anything else. And it's making all-time highs. Isn't that fascinating? It's still the same index, the S&P 500, but it's extrapolating the low volatility uh, on a mathematical basis. And this is the fund that it comes out, and it's really strong. Uh, good. So with that said, and then what was the other one? I, I can't remember offhand. I never remember. This is the um, equal weighted. I just don't remember the symbol offhand. I should SPG. I always think of SPG, but that's Simon Properties. Simon Properties, SPG. Oh, I haven't notated the daily for a while. 
uh, A, B, C, leg D in the weekly, leg E in the, in the monthly, almost at a cup formation with an all-time high test. I happened to pull this up because I pressed the button. Anything in front of me, I notate 171.12 was the all-time high back in November 2021. And we're under that, just under that, still very popular. But this is the mall, Simon property. This is the mall, shopping centers, etc. So that says, hmm, things are, must be quite good still in shopping centers. All right, so let's go back to the QQQ. We're looking at the QQQ up for uh, 48 right now. It's kind of struggling. And that just tells me that it, together with the SMH is kind of struggling, even though there's a nice session up today for at 241.95. Just stuck and that just says to me this is a very selective market right now it's rotated through to different areas and some of those areas um, are doing very well okay with that said oh and then i had a question so two questions first one was g-a-l-t don wanted to know about g-a-l-t which is collectin therapeutics i believe it's a cirrhosis liver uh, biotech company uh, made it, it keeps making C minuses. The last one was back in May, May or June of 2021, up in the 550s, and it pulls back, comes back down all the way to the uh, just over one, and then it starts a rally. I think it was December of 2022, goes to peak A, then under it it goes to an A and a B, so that becomes a C. So. He had a question about it, and he had a whole bunch of reasons why he had nibbled at it some time ago. It's already been, I mean, and I think we're talking about a couple of years that he was talking about it, again, starting a position. And you can see once upon a time, it was up in the uh, uh, 19s or 18 or 19 area back in 2014. Comes tumbling down. And uh, so what am I looking at? It keeps failing at a peak C. And this peak C wasn't a failure in that it went underneath the, the low that was made back in 2016 at 0.49, but it did come all the way back down to uh, point, uh, 1.50 uh, back in March of 2020, then it ran to a peak C. That became a C minus because it took it out and went to a lower low and it went down to a low December of 2022 to 1.02. Now it's gone peak A. Underneath it is an A and a B and a C. I think this one is going to hold. I I don't know for sure. It's in an area that's very tough because it's biotech. Um, if you look at the weekly chart, it's an inverted Chapman wave green um, Roman candle. I don't like that. Um, if it goes lower today, that's going to be a problem. But it did make a leg D. And I know that you notated it, so have a look at my notation here. This is a brand new buy signal to buy mode at 1.98 on the 18th of August, and it went all the way to a peak D and then it came tumbling down today. I mean, between yesterday and today, I'd say tumbling down is three, um, three, 2.97 to today's low of 2.55 on a percentage basis. That's a lot, but in a small uh, single digit price stock, that's not a big deal. Okay. So I, I kind of, I'm with you. I think that there's a story there. It is biotech. For the last year, it's been, uh, since it since it made that low, just above one, it's been making higher highs and higher lows. This was a very deep pullback, but this one hasn't failed like many of them have. And it is from a D in the weekly chart. So that's legitimate. That means it's just a normal uh, moment where a PD doesn't recycle higher. Instead, it gives you a strong tumble to the downside. Now it's made a dreaded H. That H can turn into a positive cup formation. So this is what you're looking for. You're in it long term, and it's just like a buy and hold thing that you've got. I wouldn't add to it just yet. Give me a yell, John. We'll look at it together maybe in a week or so. If it, if it closes above 3.06 at any point in the next week, Give me a yell. We'll look at it because I think that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see the weekly candle change completely from this not bad, but not great looking candle of this week and move to a higher high. It hasn't done that before from these A's in the weekly chart. So that's what I'm looking at. What's important, I'd say 230. If it closes under 230, it's just stuck and it could even go lower. All right. With that said, that's that's. Uh, 
Galactin Therapeutics, uh, uh, G-A-L-T, GALT is the, the reason why I remember this is, I think, but it was with a U. Wasn't there Anne Rand's character, GALT, GALT, Frank, Frank, something GALT? Anyway, that kind of struck me, and I just remember the symbol. Um, okay, next question came in. Um, what was that stock you were talking to Tom about in the interview yesterday um, that had done so nicely? Oh, that is SOLV. It was an IPO back in uh, March, I think it was, of this year. Streamed immediately up to 96.05 and then came tumbling down, got cut in half. On the 16th of July, it hit 47.16. Came to my attention and I thought, oh, I'm beginning to like this very much. And I drew in the, the little map that I'm, I always like to draw in to see where it could go. We've been long. And today it hit the 200 period moving average we were looking for at 64.17. We're in at 57. Um, I'll be back in a moment. That was a 49. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Oh, so, uh, the 
then then there's some questions uh, about the E-mini, and I, I'd like to go through this technical part of it. Most important, let me just finish this up here. So Solventum Corporation Healthcare Spinoff from Triple M. The reason why I liked it is I like spinoffs from major companies, really major, old, old. I mean, Triple M goes back, I think, almost to the 1930s or something. So, um, so in this particular instance, the low that was generated was a very nice low based on the stochastic under 20% in the teens and then suddenly breaking above it and with a very strong move. And this is what I call <coughs> a really powerful move when the stochastic immediately runs up. It's almost like a champion wave squash that takes you very quickly to an A, a B, and a C. And then it takes its time and gets to a D. But this is a little different because it's stalled at a 59.97 level and pulled back. But I like the pattern. I like the nine period moving average holding so well. When the price goes under it, you'll see that I'll show you in the stochastic in, in the uh, in the futures in a moment. And it made a cup formation in a shorter time frame than I anticipated. I like that. It went to 62.54. Then it pulled back, and I was a little upset because it pulled back a little deeper than I wanted. But even then, the nine over the 14 said, "This is great action." It took time. It went to peak C1. And a C2 by just going under the 62.54 high, but the technicals were still good. Held two days, and the third day, that was yesterday, had a big spike to the upside. And my target was the 200 period moving average, which is at 63. It's moved a little bit, 63.91. And today it went to 64.17. So, yes, I do like it. And in the and people don't usually trade IPOs or don't get positions because it, they want them want the price to build up a long history. I don't need a long history. I just need the chart pattern. So you can see the a weekly chart started fresh. In fact, only just in July did it, the, the on balance volume start to kick in. Doesn't even have some of the indicators because the look back period is too long. But it quickly went to L. That nine period over the 14 was really a good hint. The MACD strong. Stochastic hasn't got to 80%, but it's rallying in leg C. And the monthly chart is only in a leg A. I have no clue about I mean, I haven't done any research on it. I'm just looking at the chart pattern. And all I can say is uh, it's very young. <laughs> it's just it's a baby. It's just been around one, two, three, four, five months, uh, six months. So, I mean, that's nothing. But it has turned the corner in the chart pattern. And if this candle closes out strongly, it's not a quite a chapter wave Roman candle because the base of the body is a little too low. I like it to be halfway to uh, two-thirds of the way uh, from the, the wick low. So that's mm, it's good. So what I'm looking at here is that it could stall again. It's got the characteristic... Look at the cycle, the time period between each big loop to the upside. You can see it one one week in the uh, weekly chart, then two weeks, and now it's gone to leg C. Maybe it takes three weeks. I don't know, but it looks to me like higher highs and higher lows. So where would I go? And I'm going to draw this in because we've got a pattern like this coming up that I'm going to show you. So it says, yes, your lopsided V-shaped pattern or, or cup formation. And it says to me, that if this is the characteristic of the rectangle that I've drawn, it should go towards this high, the high of the uh, tenth, the week of the tenth of May, of uh, sixty-seven fifty. Sixty-seven fifty, and right now it's at sixty-four point oh one. Doesn't say time. I use other techniques, but I just wanted to show you. So the question was, what was it? SOLV. What is it? Solvent solventum. Corporation, as I say, we're, we're long from lower down, and I just like the pattern. I do this purely on pattern formations. Who knows how long it can go for, but so far it's doing exactly what we wanted. All right, next question came in. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Got to look at NEM. NEM is Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining is very strong. Peak B, peak C, it's in leg D to the upside. It really is probably the leader of the pack in those goals. So there we are. There's your C and here's your leg D. D is where other things can happen. doesn't have to, but that's where you've got to be careful. 
This could be an instant restart, but in the meantime, I'm calling it F in the weekly chart, only a B in the monthly chart. So <coughs> within that context, um, this is I mean, up 30 cents today, 53.49, when gold itself is kind of weak. Whoops, I typed that in the wrong place. Gold, what did I say gold was? Gold was down 18 now. Uh, let's see what the GDX is doing. GDX is just... Uh, it's made a peak C. It should go higher, but it's it's just holding nicely, and uh, down 18 cents at 38.70. My target here would be 40.35. Come the next week or so, uh, we'll see what happens. All right. The other question was silver. Yeah, guess silver. Silver is pulling back. It isn't as good a chart formation as as gold. It was better before. Now it's not so good. Um, 29.32 down 69 66 cents no point yes down 66 cents um the nine still over the 14 it's just stuck in a range high grade copper high grade copper trading right now uh down a little bit down a fraction got i told you that it's been repelled by the 200 period moving average look at that it's like glue one two three four five six seven eight nine 10 out of 10 sessions, only yesterday it didn't touch the 200 period moving average. Even today it went to 4.278. Now it's trading at 4.22 off, off the high. Okay, so those are the questions. I, one other thing I had, I wrote it down. Oh, BRK, BRK.B, that's Berkshire Hathaway, fabulous all time highs. Even as we speak, it's an all time high. 472.07 has more in the way of fixed income than the U.S. Treasury or something crazy like that. Um, yeah, leg D, leg E in the weekly, sorry, leg E in the daily, leg D in the weekly, leg D in the monthly, over that major trend line resistance. Now that's support at about 442. Wow. And the S&P had the same pattern. It hasn't broken above it yet. Look, it's trying to but I suspect it's going to in um, over the next couple of weeks. All right. So with that said, uh, okay, now we want to get to this. So I'm just going to take a moment here. This is part of a little Chapman Wave study here. So in the five-minute chart, I mentioned that the 200-period uh, moving average right here would become, it's like a magnet line keeps coming back to it. And that's at 9.15 this morning, and that is... Um, no, that was. Yeah. Okay. So what we're looking at is, I'll be back in a moment. I want to show you this chart, how it has been a propellant, but it keeps coming back to it. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. 
All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So let me answer, answer a question. I had a question about could I show the New York Stock Exchange. I'm going to call them again, but I've been calling a trade station for a year or two. They stopped getting the New York Stock Exchange. I don't understand why or how, but I don't get it. <coughs> so... Um, but I do use the VT. It's not the same thing, but it, it's got the same connotation. And that is, whoops, I typed it in the wrong place. Uh, VT is the um, Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. And you can see this is only at a peak A. I think today it's trying. It hasn't gotten yet. So this is an A, and I call this a legitimate A. It could be a single leg up failure. I was going to talk about that in the... Uh, five-minute E-mini, that did an Eiffel Tower straight up and came back, and it did come back to test right here at A, right there. and But it didn't take out the left side low, so this is still valid at the moment. But it came back and hit the 200-period moving average. Then it went higher, came back, made a higher high. So I just wanted to talk about this in terms of the VT. Uh, this is a single leg A, and what's the time? I've got time, okay. So you've got two bars, 117.45 and 117.53. So 53 was the high. And then yes, uh, yesterday the high was 60. So that's got your B. Now, this is something I need to discuss. It's taken off Friday. So I'm going to just take a moment, John. And I'm going to say, um, I like this. It's a, probably a different pattern to the uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange, but it does say that the Vanguard Total Wall Stock ETF, well, no matter what people say about economies around the world, markets around the world are going to highs. Not all of them, obviously, but the major markets are doing well. And sometimes you can have a huge leg A or even a leg A and a B, and then it starts to store and you only get a modest C and D. People say to me, wait a minute, where are we going if, we, if this is only a, a leg C and the Dow could go much higher? No. I don't do it. There's other te there are other techniques that I use for that. Just in the Chapman wave, it says higher peak by one penny, goes to the next leg, a lower trough, a leg down makes a lower trough. And that's all I look at. So th with that said, I had a question about, oh, we're down, thank goodness. Oh, CMG. So CMG, <coughs> yeah, remember I spoke about this the other day. Uh, Z, <coughs> excuse me. 
when you get this cup formation like that, after a dreaded eight successful test or even just a, a retest of, of a left side low, and it starts to close above the arch high, that's good. So you see CMG, uh, Chipotle Mexican Grill, has gone peak A, peak, peak B. He has a peak A, peak B, peak C. Uh, no, that fails. So this is peak A and peak B. So what I'm looking at here is if Chipotle is able to close, I'm going to give it just a little bit of room. It's at 55.74. If at any time next week, preferably closes about 57.35, but it just has to get to 57.35, and that'll be very important. If it can get there, preferably close above it. You're turning this dreaded H pattern, and it almost went to an M. Remember the lowercase H goes, sometimes it can go to lowercase M. Then it turns it into something different. Now it's got the potential to be a very nice cup formation in the daily. Weekly is still quite weak, even though it's in leg. I think this is leg B. Let me just double check here. You've got 50, 47, 47, 98. Great. 48 round number low. Okay. So that 48 round number low helps it be a successful H pattern. It's a tw t uh, like a tweezer button or almost in the uh, weekly chart. So CMG is looking better. It's not looking great, but it's looking better. It's pushing away from the 200 period moving average. 5730-ish. Close above that or at 5730 says that you've, the rule that I have is you've got to close above for two out of three sessions above this high, which is the high of 56.34 made on the 12th of August, and we haven't done that yet. So if that if that unfolds, and it can, out of two, out of three sessions, preferably consecutive, but maybe even out of four sessions, it can close above that 57.30 level. All of a sudden, Chipotle is going to look like a, a target. It can start to go to 58 and 59, one step at a time. It's acting quite poorly here, but that's what it needs. A break below 53 says, nah, forget about it. It's just going sideways. Probably going to make another H pattern. All right. All right. Now I'm going to do this because I had a question about it. Um, the 30-minute chart. So this is sometimes it's a little complex. I like it when it's really simple. If it's complex, I just say, you know, you have to figure out. Complex is this, in the background, you have this 10-minute chart. It has this pattern that I talk about that has this kind of, Here's your starting point. It's this bottom some spiky hair pattern. And then you have to have alternate counts, but it says that it should keep coming back like a Chapman Way flat base restart, which we had right here in the five in the one minute chart, right there. Uh, un unconventional flat base restart. Went to peak E, it comes back down. F, G, and it comes back down. Then it still goes to a D, like a rogue wave, and then it plummets. So let me just show you what I'm looking at here. Blank chart. That's the whole thing about the uh, channel wave notation. You can't. I've got. I've got the relative strength here. Every time, every once in a while, I take one particular indicator and I just focus on it. In this case, I always use relative strength, but um, I, I, I had it and I've kept it here for a reason. Most importantly, look what it's done. It went to um, a peak D and then a brand new A, B, C, D. Doji candle, and that was at, uh, let me lift it up so you can see the time. That was at, that was yesterday, right? At 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon, yep, 29th. And then it came tumbling down. Now, we've seen this pattern very often over the last week or two. Um, I, I, I was going to show it, but I don't want to do it right now. So I'm reposting 30-minute ES. Where you have B, why not A? Uh, where I have B, why not A? Where I have B, D, E, F, because you've taken out the base. Ew, give me a time. Okay, Dan, let me show you what I'm looking at. There's, if in a rectangle formation, we had one rectangle formation right there, and we went above it. So I can get rid of this just because it, once you finish, you finished. So now you've got a new rectangle formation. Uh oh. Oh, we've got another segment to go. I wanted to show you what I'm looking at here. In fact, if you can see this during the break, um, Dan, I'll be doing this so that I don't run out of time because in the last seg segment, I've got some things that I wanted to discuss. So 
I'll tell you exactly what I've done right here. I, I've notated it. I'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays. For his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. The last segment, I just want to say, I had a question about left side, right side price, time match for the IWM. I'm going to this high right here. I'm coming back to the 30-minute email. Uh, on the first, the high was 224.89. The actual high was 228.63 the day before, but I'm this I'm using this red candle. So I'm saying that the 225 level could be hit late next week using inside uh, the channel wave inside wedge target resistance line and the left side right side price time match to a plumb line that is not the base, but it's it's one that I chose. And that's all I'm saying. But it's really dependent on it getting at least by Monday, I uh, saw so Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest, hitting the 223 level and it's at 219.63 right now. That's a big ask. Okay. So in the meantime, so let's just go back to this just real quickly. So look there. Here's your starting point uh, around about two o'clock uh, yesterday, I think it was. And then it goes peak A. Underneath it, it goes, oh, wait a minute. I need that. 75, yes, I thought I, no, no, this is this is the next A, it's still called these, they blue, but it should be gray. That's another A, that's another A, that's a B, that's a C. Then you have to wait, I could have had a C1, C2, I would have loved to have that, but I don't. So basically what's happened now, it's gone D, 
there could be an instant restart, a flat-based restart that goes E slash F, E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and this could be a D, not an A. Everything about us is G and A, a starting a brand new 30-minute buy mode in the E mini. I don't know. <clears throat> All I can say, using the same rectangle formation technique, the high that was made at 2.30 yesterday at 56.55.25, that should be hit Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, late Tuesday or Wednesday, if this doesn't take out the low of 56.25. All right, that's I'm signing off. I have a wonderful long weekend. We'll see if we're able to go to higher highs next week. 